brain neurovascular unit uh, using optogenetic tools. So first of all, I'd like to remind you that the neurovascular unit uh, consists of different cells, uh, for example, brain microvascular endothelial cells surrounded by pericytes and astroglial cells, astrocytes, as well as neuronal cells that are very tightly connected to astrocytes. And astrocytes play a very important role in the controlling neurovascular unit activity. So the main idea of the neurovascular unit is to provide the appropriate blood supply to the active brain regions to activate neuronal cells, and also to control the structural and functional integrity of the blood-brain barrier. So astrocytes appear to be very important in either controlling the endothelial cells uh, activity as well as neuronal cells activity. So a uh, few years ago, we described several mechanisms of astroglia control to neurovascular unit activity. So we focused on the activity of astrocytes in providing, for example, lactate to support uh, neuronal uh, astrocyte uh, metabolic coupling, as well as proliferation of brain microvascular endothelial cells that are very important for neurogenesis and uh, baryogenesis and angiogenesis. So that's why astrocytes might be considered as a very, uh, key, very important cells, key cells that may connect activity of neuronal cells and uh, BBB, blood brain various structural and functional integrity. So astrocytes within the neurovascular unit may control neuronal activity, for example, by release of glial transmitters, potassium buffering, and uh, supporting neuron astrocyte metabolic coupling. Also, they are very uh, important as uh, uh, regulators of local microcirculation to provide glial control in active brain regions. Also, you know that uh, astrocytes are very important for the uh, brain drainage, uh, particularly for the activity of the lymphatic system. They are involved in the, the development of reactive gliosis, as well as baryogenesis, angiogenesis, and neurogenesis by supporting stem cells maintaining proliferation and migration and establishment of tight cell-to-cell -cell contacts. So the latter was in the focus of uh, our uh, research for a few years. Uh, if we are talking about optogenetic control of astrocytes, it's a little bit different from the uh, optogenetic control of neuronal cells because, uh, as you know, astroglial cells are not intrinsically excitable. So, uh, expression of light sensitive uh, channels in the membrane of astroglial cells uh, can uh, utilize some other mechanism to activate astrocytes, uh, for example, uh, making them uh, able to release new uh, glial transmitters like ATP, glutamate, uh, lactate, and serine. So it was uh, initially shown in several papers, and Professor Kasparov was one of the first researchers uh, deeply involved in this uh, area of investigation, and they have shown that uh, optogenetically activated astroglial cells may uh, produce ATP to stimulate uh, autocrine and paracrine uh, paraenergic activity within the uh, neuronal astroglial coupling uh, to provide uh, regulation of neuronal activity in the brain. Some other papers also describe uh, the optogenetic tools that uh, uh, now can be used to uh, regulate astrocytes activity. For example, astrocytes may control breathing through pH-dependent release of ATP. So um, we can use optogenetic tools to mimic pH-evoked calcium responses in astrocytes uh, that, that express channel rhodopsin to activate some neurons uh, in a close vicinity to the activated astroglial cells. And even in vivo, it was demonstrated that uh, optogenetically stimulated uh, astrocytes may produce some very uh, important effects, for example, in, uh, at the behavioral level uh, to modulate decision-making in rats by affecting neural activity in the corresponding brain uh, areas. So uh, before we have shown that when we co-cultured uh, or nanotypic hypocampal slices with um, uh, uh, 
brain uh, microvascular endothelial cells uh, and transfected astrocytes within the slices with the uh, channel rhodopsin and activated them with a blue light, we were able to see some changes in the behavior of uh, brain microvascular and the filial cells, uh, even without uh, any direct contact to the uh, aquota activated astrocytes. So in that model, optogenetic stimulation of astrocytes resulted in the modulation of brain microvascular and the filial cells activity uh, and some changes in extracellular potassium concentrations and finally led to vasoconstriction. So, uh, and astrocytes are very important for maintaining the neurovascular unit and blood-brain barrier integrity. And we are mainly focused on the role of VBB, blood-brain barrier, and uh, neurovascular unit in controlling the neurogenesis. So, for example, in two major neurogenic niches uh, in the adult brain, like a subventricular zone, uh, that, uh, where we have defective astroglial coverage and defective digunction machinery and endothelial cell that would provide more blood and liquid derived, derived regulatory factors to support maintenance and proliferation of stem cells and progenitors. In the subgranular zone of uh, hypocampus, we have intrinsically fully established astroglial coverage and tight junctional machinery in, in endothelial cells. So it means that the local microenvironment would be provided by cells located within the niche uh, including astroglial cells, and it would affect the development of uh, stem cells and progenitor cells and uh, their integration into the uh, neuronal circuits in the hypocampus. So, uh, on the other hand, I should say that uh, as have a type of neurodegeneration represents one of the best models to see how uh, breakdown of blood-brain barrier and alterations in the neurovascular unit are coupled to aberrant uh, neurogenesis because due to uh, pericyte contraction and endothelial dysfunction at the uh, different loss in the brain affected with um, Alzheimer's disease, we can see leakage of blood-brain barrier and some astroglial reaction and aberrant angiogenesis. So if you could use um, uh, Alzheimer type of neurodegeneration as a model, we can easily see how astroglial cells activity can manipulate with the neurogenesis effect in the subgranular zone of hypocampus. So, uh, as you can see, a um, uh, breakdown of blood-brain barrier is very uh, well evident in the in, the in vitro model of BBB uh, that was um, constructed from uh, brain microvascular endothelial cells, astroglial cells, and neuronal cells. So as you can see, uh, the transendothelial electric resistance uh, demonstrating the integrity, structural integrity of the endothelial cell layer was very much affected by the toxic action of amyloid beta 142. And it also expression of several molecules that are involved in the cell to cell coupling within the uh, neurovascular unit and blood brain barrier um, uh, were very much um, altered in the static and dynamic microfluidic BBB model in vitro. Also, uh, from the in vivo studies, we found that there was a deregulated expression of time junction machinery like uh, GEN1 and ZO1 uh, in brain microvessel endothelial cells in Alzheimer's disease. So it was uh, some changes in the ratio of the um, expression of CD31 and GEN1 in uh, the particular area of uh, hypercampus in the subgranular zone. So, and uh, astrocytes in a case of uh, Alzheimer's type of neurodegeneration appear to be very much affected because you see that uh, in a case of uh, injection of beta amyloid into the hypocampus of mice, we can find the uh, predominance of protoplasmic astrocytes expressing uh, markers of perivascular astroglial cells. So, uh, we may focus on the subgranular zone of hypercampus to uh, uh, figure out the mechanisms, how astroglial cells may support uh, neurogenesis and how could we uh, operate with the activity of astroglial cells using optogenetic tools. Uh, 
So this slide shows you the, the expression of different markers of differentiation and some kind of expression patterns for uh, so-called questions radial glial cells that correspond to the neural stem cells. Neural stem cells that are already activated and they are slowly dividing neural stem cells as well as type 2 progenitors and astrocytes. Actually, we are focused on these very, very early steps at the subgranular zone neurogenesis to see what is going with um, the neurogenic effects uh, when uh, astrocytes are photoactivated or not. And uh, as you can see, alterations in early stages of subgranules on neurogenesis are very much evident in the case of Alzheimer's type of neurodegeneration. Uh, for example, appearance of major neurons and even immature neurons like nestine immunopositive and immunopositive neurons uh, was very much reduced in the case of Alzheimer beta. Uh, in the case of amyloid beta-induced neurodegeneration. It was corresponded to some alterations in neuronal differentiation because appearance of some uh, markers for different steps of uh, neuronal uh, differentiation, neuroblasts and uh, image mh neurons was also affected in the case of Alzheimer type of neurodegeneration. And uh, we were able to uh, resume that in the case of Alzheimer type of neurodegeneration, we have reduced pool of stem cells and neuronal progenitors, ultra differentiation and migration neuroblasts, and decreased survival of image and major neurons. So let's uh, see what is going, uh, what would happen if we would be able to manipulate these astrocytes that locate very. Uh, um, um, densely in the subgranular zone to support proliferation and differentiation of uh, cells with neurogenic potential. So to do this, we use uh, such approach that we express uh, uh, channel rhodopsin under the control of the strong promoter GFAP uh, that is expressed in astroglial cells predominantly. Uh, and uh, we um, uh, isolated astrocytes from neurospheres and also we could put neurospheres and brain microvessel and the filial cells together to produce in vitro neurogenic niche model. And then we use a blue light to stimulate um, GFAP channel rhodopsin to MK expressing astroglial cells in a series of pulses for 60 seconds and each uh, pulse uh, was 20 millisecond duration and the uh, 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 AV vectors for the transfection of astrocytes was kindly, were kindly provided by Professor Kaspar from the Bristol University UK. So we found that proliferation of neospheres co-cultured with intact and photoactivated astrocytes um, was uh, significantly uh, increased uh, if we co-culture the neurospheres with the photoactivated cells. So it means that uh, photoactivation of astrocytes and the uh, co-incubation of uh, activated astrocytes with neurospheres resulted in a higher proliferation rate in uh, neurospheres obtained from the adult hippocampus. Uh, when we calculated the relative number of so-called resting or question uh, neural stem cells and activated neural stem cells like type 1, uh, uh, progenitors, we, we were able to find that photoactivation of astrocytes resulted in the significant increase in the number of either questioned and activated neuron stem cells in 24 and 48 hours after the uh, co-culture uh, co of um, neurospheres with the photoactivated astrocytes. Also, we found that photostimulation of channel rhodopsin expressing astrocytes affected cell proliferation index, uh, particularly in neurospheres treated with amyloid beta, thereby suggesting that uh, activated astrocytes may um, have some effect on uh, amyloid beta treated neurospheres. And photostimulated astrocytes restore development of type 1 and type 2 progenitors affected by amyloid beta. So what are the target cells for photoactivated astrocytes in the in vitro uh, neurogenic niche model? We focused on two uh, subpopulations of the cells, GFAP immunopositive cells that represent neuron stem cells and just newly born astrocytes, and also nesting immunopositive cells that represent actually, again, neuron stem cells and neural progenitors. 
So, and we thought that probably activation of astrocytes would affect the uh, maintaining and proliferation of neural stem cells and progenitors uh, by um, some mechanism coupled to, for example, a metabolic coupling between the cells, uh, appearing a bioavailability of some uh, metabolic uh, metabolites and substrates. So, First of all, uh, we found that photoactivation of astrocytes results in stimulation of cell proliferation, for example, as evident from PCNA expression, and shifting from glial to neuronal development in the uh, neurogenic niche model in vitro. Then, you, as you can see from here, photoactivation of astrocytes resulted in changes in lactate transport in type 1 and type 2 cells. So uh, monocarboxylate uh, transport AO1 expression was reduced in uh, type 2 progenitors. Uh, also, photoactivation of astrocytes resulted in suppressed expression of NAD metabolizing active enzymes in uh, stem cells as well as in progenitors, either CD38 NAD metabolizing enzyme and CD157. And uh, we found also some changes in lactate concentration in the in vitro neurogenic model caused by the photoactivation of astrocytes and no changes in the bioavailability of NAD or NADH in the extracellular medium. At the next uh, step of our experimental work, we used another model where neurospheres uh, were implanted into the uh, organotypic hypocampal uh, culture, exuviva. And you can see here the example of the implanted uh, neurospheres with different magnification. And uh, this model is uh, very good for some um, for studies of some mechanism of uh, tight coupling of cells within the uh, organotypic hypocampal culture, uh, cultured with a close vicinity to neurogenic uh, cells as well as uh, photoactivated astrocytes within the hypocampal uh, slice. So we infected hypocampal slice with uh, uh, channel rhodopsin, a B vector, and then we found that uh, no changes in the expression of GFP and nesting was found in the, uh, were found in the uh, neurogenic niche, but photostimulation of uh, hypocampal astrocytes resulted in elevated expression of connexin 43 in type one and type two cells, thereby representing uh, much a bigger connection, functional connection between the cells within the neuro, uh, implanted neurogenic niche. So uh, later we um, found that uh, electrophysiological characteristics of hypocampal neurons uh, co-cultured with uh, implanted neurogenic niche uh, have been changed because uh, we found some changes in the uh, tau constant of full field excitatory uh, postsynaptic potentials at 24 and 48 hours of co-culture. And particularly we found depression uh, in, uh, of uh, field potentials and paired pulse facilitation at day one and two of the culture. It's very well corresponded to uh, recent uh, studies uh, on stimulation of neurogenesis that may uh, reduce uh, field um, uh, postsynaptic potential in matching neurons of hypocampus because of redistribution of pre-existing synapses to newly formed neurons. It means that if we, we are able to produce some new neuronal cells uh, by the photoactivation of astroglial cells located uh, close to the neurogenic niche, then the uh, newly formed neurons may integrate in the pre-existing uh, circuits. So uh, we can conclude from the in vitro uh, neurovascular unit model and neurogenic niche model, as well as from the model using organotypic slice and uh, uh, implanted neurogenic niche, that the major target cells for the photoactivated astroglial cells are represented by the population of nesting immunopositive cells. So neuron stem cells and uh, neuronal progenitors at the a very early stage of their proliferation. And we can see them some suppression of lactated uh, uh, flux, suppression of expression of NAD metabolizing enzymes, and some changes in connexin 43 expression, but quite different in implanted model and in search model. So it requires some further investigation. 
JFEP um, immunopositive cells, cells saw some kind of astral lineage. Uh, they didn't demonstrate uh, such changes uh, except for suppression of CD38 expression. So we may conclude that neuronal lineage is um, mainly affected by the photoactivated astrocytes in the model of neurogenic niche in vitro. And the conclusions that could be made uh, are as follows. So optogenetic stimulation of astrocytes is an effective tool for controlling neurogenesis both in vitro and ex vivo. Photoactivated astrocytes may change some local lactate and NAD metabolism, affect coupling through the connexins and facilitate neuronal differentiation, but not glial or lineage activity in the neurogenic niche model in vitro. And the main target pool for photoactivated astrocytes is represented by neuron stem cells and neural progenitor cells. And photostimulated astrocytes restore development of type 1 and type 2 progenitors affected by the toxic action of amyloid beta in vitro. Uh, thank you very much for your attention and warmest regards from Fresno State Medical University, from the Research Institute of Molecular Medicine and Photobiochemistry. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Salmin, a very interesting presentation. And uh, so please raise your hands and write into chat. So we will read your questions. Yes, I see applause. Uh, Piotr Dmitrich, we, we cannot hear you. Uh, shall we? Just, uh, it would be much easier if you just raise the hand and you will be on the top of our uh, list because otherwise we have 150 participants and they are arranged in. Okay, so yes. Okay. На панели участник есть кнопка поднять руку, hand. Okay, Piotr Dmitrich, you are in, uh, on air now. Okay, so, so, so thank you very much. Thank you very much for so interesting presentation. Just, um, this is really an you know, exciting approach, but my question is about the physiology of the approach. So astrocyte cells, essentially glide cells, they have very high resting potential. They're very negative, about minus 90, minus 90 millivolts. So if you will produce, if you will express channel or rhodopsin, so you will Certainly, if you apply the light, you will depolarize, strongly depolarize the cells, just to do that one. So you will increase intracellular calcium concentration. So you will increase actual the proliferation. This is understandable. So, but um, actually, what is the physiological meaning of your approaches to, to, to use the, uh, the channel rhodopsin expression in the, in the astrocytes? Actually, this is my main question. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Professor Brzezkowski, for your question. So uh, the initial idea was to select the cells that might affect the development of uh, uh, neural stem cells and neural progenitors in the neurogenic niche. To do this, we have to choose the population of cells that can be uh, selectively stimulated. That's why optogenetic approach was chosen. And uh, astroglial cells, they are not excitable, uh, but they can raise calcium concentration due to activation of channel rhodopsin. And then in a calcium dependent manner, they would release some glide transmitters like ADP, for example. And ADP may act uh, in a paraquine uh, manner to stimulate, for example, neuron stem cells and progenitors. So as we know from some literature data, uh, neural stem cells and pro progenitors they express Polynergic receptors sensitive to ADP. So the main idea was to stimulate astroglial cells to see what would happen in uh, uh, stem cells and progenitor cells. So the same approach we have pr produced before when we used optogenetic activation of astroglial cells to see what would happen in a case of uh, brain microvessel uh, endothelial cells that are uh, the main layer in the blood brain barrier. So Optogenetic, tool, optogenetic instrument, they are very much um, important for selective activation of only one population of cells. And since we use adenosine associated virus and we use isolated culture of astroglial cells, only GFAP expressing astrocytes were the target 
for photostimulation. So that's why we can separate the effects of aspergillus cells on other cell types. Okay, so thank you very much. <clears throat>